a sad story written by not pregnant thank god Harry was once again lying in a pool of blood, his own blood. Who would have thought that Harry would die this way? Potter! his uncle yelled. Harry tried to get up, best he could, but he was, still wasn't fast enough. His uncle stormed in. Ignoring my calls, I... Vernon then continued to beat Harry until he was on the brink of unconsciousness. You will respond when I speak to you, Vernon yelled at Harry. Yes, sir. I did not say that you could speak. Do you understand? Harry didn't reply. Answer me, Vernon yelled. Yes, sir. The family is going out to dinner, he began. You'll stay here, but you'll be somewhere where you can't make any trouble, he said as he grabbed Harry by the neck and dragged him out to the garden shed. He then padlocked the door with at least twenty locks. How did this happen, Harry thought to himself. Earlier that summer, Harry was sitting in his room all alone. He hadn't eaten for days, and the Dursleys had made sure that he didn't get any food parcels. They also made sure that Harry didn't send any letters by killing Hedwig. Harry remembers the day they killed her. It was only hours after he had arrived back from school. Boy, come here. Bring that bloody bird. Harry didn't know how his life was going to change in that instant. Harry carried Hedwig over and handed it to his uncle. His uncle then pulled out a shotgun with a silencer on it and shot Hedwig in then less than a second. Hedwig! Harry screamed as he tried to get over to his dead bird's body. He was stopped by his uncle. Harry had never gotten beaten before except for Dudley, but he, al he had always managed to escape. His was different. Vernon was way bigger and stronger than Dudley. Harry was unconscious in the hour. When he came to, Harry went for a walk. He was scavenging for newspapers and bins, like he did last year. When he laid eyes on the girl, her face was bruised and bleeding like the rest of her body. She was the most beautiful thing Harry had ever seen. Oh my God, are you all right? She looked at the speaker, then at his scar. I do not need your help, Harry Potter. You're a witch, Harry said surprised. There wasn't any witches or wizards for miles. Not for long. Let me help you, please. Why would the famous Harry Potter want to help a commoner? I'm sure you have bigger problems. Why do you think I wouldn't help you? He really didn't need any more reminding of Voldemort. He took her to the garden shed. Hours turned into days. Days into weeks. Her name was Maria. She told him that her father was the one responsible for the beatings. They had begun to fall in love. One day Vernon walked in on the two, while they were eating. Vernon took the liberty to return the girl back to her father. The beatings had gotten worse than they were before. Harry thought of the memory. It was hard to believe that it had only happened three weeks ago. It seemed like an eternity. Maria was getting beaten for the third time that day. Her father's shoes, still capped, hit her kidney. She knew that she was, should be unconscious, but there was something wrong with Harry. She ran outside, and he made it to Harry's house just in time to see Uncle Vernon come from the backyard, his hands covered in blood. She ran to the backyard, but was stopped by Vernon and her father. I can't wait to see Harry, Ron said. He was in the car driving to Harry's house. Yeah, talk about a great birthday present, getting away from the Dursleys. They then stooped a house away from Harry's house to hear someone screaming, whimpering. The five of them, Fred, George, Charlie, Ron, and Mr. Weasley, saw two grown men beating and kicking a figure on the floor. Mr. Weasley stunned both of them, including Dudley and Petunia, who were in the car. Vernon got the last word. It's too late, my dear. They turned around and saw the figure running into the backyard. They followed her. She ran to the garden shed. Mr. Weasley tried to pull her away so that they could open the locks. When they did, she ran in, then screamed. She came out with the lifeless body of Harry. The Weasley could do nothing but stand there in shock and cry. No! Harry! No, Harry! Please don't leave me! It's my time to go. No! Not yet! She pleaded. Harry, I'm pregnant. You're going to be a father. That's why you can't leave me. I'm sorry. 
I'll always love you. His eyes went to the back of his head and falling lifeless in his lover's arms. The chaos erupted and the world crashed around the two. Now, just to be clear, if the professor does levitate you, Dad, when you know you haven't been attached to any wires, that's going to be sufficient evidence. You're not going to turn around and say that it's a magician's trick. If you feel that way, you should say so now, so we can figure out a different experiment instead. And you, Mum, your theory says that the professor should be able to do this, and if that doesn't happen, you'll admit you're mistaken. Deputy Headmistress Minerva McGonagall was watching Harry with a bemused expression. Is that sufficient, Mr. Potter? Sufficient? Probably not. But at least it will help. Go ahead, Deputy Headmistress. Just Professor will do. Wingardium Leviosa. Harry looked at his father. Huh. His father looked back at him. Huh. Then Professor Varus Evans looked back at Professor McGonagall. All right, you can put me down now. Harry ruffled a hand through his own hair. Maybe it was just that strange part of him which had already been convinced, but... That's a bit of an anticlimax. You'd think there'd be some kind of more dramatic mental event associated with updating on an observation of infinitesimal probability. Harry stopped himself. Mum, McGonagall, and even his dad were giving him that look again. I mean, with finding out everything I believe is false. Seriously, it should have been more dramatic. Would you like a further demonstration, Mr. Potter? You don't have to. We've performed a definitive experiment. But... Harry hesitated. He couldn't help himself. Actually, under the circumstances, he shouldn't be helping himself. It was right and proper to be curious. What else can you do? Professor McGonagall turned into a cat. You can't do that! At once, the small tabby morphed back up into a robed woman. I'm sorry, Mr. Potter. I should have warned you. You turned into a cat! A small cat! You violated conservation of energy! That's not just an arbitrary rule! It's implied by the form of the quantum Hamiltonian! Rejecting it destroys unitarity! And cats are complicated! A human mind can't just visualize a whole cat's anatomy and... and all the cat biochemistry! Magic isn't enough to do that! You'd have to be a god! That's the first time I've ever been called that. A blur was coming over Harry's vision as his brain started to comprehend what had just broken. The whole notion of physics. 3,000 years of resolving big, complicated things into smaller pieces, finding that the true laws were perfectly universal and had no exceptions anywhere and took the form of simple math, and then a woman turned into a cat. So much for all that. He pulled his thoughts together. The march of reason would just have to start over, that was all. They still had the experimental method, and that was the important thing. How do I get to Hogwarts, then? Hold on a moment, Harry. What about your condition? His condition? What's this? I don't sleep right. My sleep cycle is 26 hours long. I always go to sleep two hours later, every day. 10 p.m., 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., until it goes around the clock. That's why I haven't been attending a regular school up until now. One of the reasons... I'll check with Madame Pomfrey to see if she knows any remedies. I'm sure this won't be a problem. Now, what are these other reasons? I am a conscientious objector to the child draft, on the grounds that I should not have to suffer for a continually disintegrating school system's abject failure to provide teachers or study materials of even minimally adequate quality. Oh, is that why you bit a math teacher in third year? She didn't know what a logarithm was! Of course, biting her was a very mature response to that. I was seven years old. How long are you going to keep on bringing that up? They're, uh, they're... There is to be no biting of teachers at Hogwarts. Fine, I won't bite anyone who doesn't bite me first. Well, I think, under the circumstances, that I should avoid taking you to purchase your study materials until a day or two before school begins. What? Why? I suspect, Mr. Potter, 
that if I leave you alone for two months with your school books, even without a wand, I will return to this house only to find a crater billowing purple smoke, a depopulated city surrounding it, and a plague of flaming zebras terrorizing what remains of England. Harry's mother and father nodded in perfect unison. Mom! Dad!